Hello and good evening, this is Ruth Pozuelo from Curva.com and today is again time for DAX Fridays. And in this DAX Friday, we are not going to go through a function. What I am going to do is talk about calendars to know or to let you know why you need them and how you do to build one. And you might wonder why are you doing calendars on a DAX Friday video? Well, Here's why calendars are actually needed for time intelligence functions or for DAX functions. And I have been asked, asked to, to explain why and when you need calendars. Unfortunately, I cannot find a comment, but um, it was uh, somebody asked me like two, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, perhaps. So I thought this was a great opportunity to go through it. So if you would like to use time intelligence functions in DAX, you need to have most of the times a calendar. And I'm saying most of the times because the requirement is actually that the date column has to have continuous days. And what that means basically is that your date column has to have consecutive days. So one, two, three, four, you know, the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. Here's an example of a table that does not have it. It starts with the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then jumps to the eighth and ninth. And this is typical for, for example, sales table where businesses are not active during weekends. That means that your database will not record any sale during weekend and then that date will not be there or most of the time it's just not there, you know, you won't just record a blank. So if you have this type of dates in your facts table, you won't be able to use time intelligence functions, okay? So if you're building a calendar, you have to have continuous dates. It's very, very important. Now, another reason why calendars are useful is because you can have actually a table where you have store all the relevant columns for dates. That means day, day name, months, quarters, years, and, you know. And it is quite nice if you can actually have one table where you store these instead of duplicated for every fact table. So it's practical thing too, useful to have a calendar table for that reason. I'm, it's very, 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 very few Power BI files that I ha I don't have a calendar on, like really very, very few. Most of them, I always start building the calendar, you know, with the, the template because I know I will need them sooner or later. And if I don't, it's easier to remove than to build them afterwards. So, for your calendar, you can have many rows you like. Now, you know, Power BI does not like, it likes like a tall tables. That means that a lot of rows, but not so many columns. You can have columns, but don't go overboard. I mean, if you are not going to use ever day name in German, just don't put, put it there. If you need it later, you can add it, it's no problem. But uh, just keep, don't, don't go overboard. You just make sure you keep the columns that you need and nothing else. And if you have a calendar table, hide the dates from the other calendars. So you learn your users to go to the calendar table anytime they need a day or a month or a year or something like that. So it will be easier for them and it will be a more user-friendly model or Power BI file. So with that said, when you create a calendar, the only thing you need is actually a date column. You don't have to have your month and day and all that stuff. Of course, you will build it because probably you will be doing all kinds of dice and slides on months and years and stuff. But in, in reality, you only need a date column. So just so you know. The date column has to be formatted as a date. So here you have the same date. Here it is formatted as a number. You could have it also formatted as a text. It won't work. You need to have it formatted as a date. You need to see the calendar icon here for the calendar to work properly. 
Okay, so always, always format it as date. Make sure that you check that. Otherwise, your time intelligence won't work. Another thing you can't have is actually um, have date and time. So your date column cannot contain times. So make sure you format it, you know, with a calendar that does not have the, the watch and it cannot be a time sum either, in case you wonder. So the, this is the wrong way to build your calendar. Next tip is if your, you know, sales data source starts in 2015, you don't need to build a calendar that goes back to 1999. It will just take space on your model and it will be totally useless. So as a, as a habit, just get the, the um, minimum date that you have on your model, either if it comes from the sales or from invoices or, or anything, it doesn't matter. So you start your calendar there. And then I normally finish my calendars on today's date, but there are uh, times when you might want to have dates on the future or you want to stop earlier. Okay. So you might want to stop at the end of the month or, you know, there are different circumstances where you actually need all, all the types of calendars, but you know, when you have online sources and you have live connections, Start when your model starts and finish with today's date and you will have an easy to work uh, Power BI model. Um, so Power BI can actually create calendars using either DAX or Power Query M. And I have videos on how to do both in case you don't know how to do it. So you can go to DAX Fridays 2. And that is where I show you how to create a calendar using DAX. But if you need it in uh, M, I'll show you how to do that too. And that is, in that case, this is the same function as the calendar. That means that the calendar table will be created based on the dates you have in your model. So very, very useful. I have a playlist on calendars. These videos are there. In case you don't know, go there and check it out. And Power BI can actually manage standard and custom calendars. So you can have your own calendars and time intelligence will work. You need to do a few modifications, but it will still work. So I have also videos on how to create a standard calendar that will self-generate with just a few parameters. And also I have a video showing you how to create these custom calendars, these four, four, five, four, five, four, five, four, four, you know. So if you don't know how to create them and you need them, I have a video on that too. Okay. So anything you need to know about the Calendars, not anything, but a lot of things that you want to know about calendars, I think I have it. Go to the playlist and I think you'll find your answer. Otherwise, let me know and I can complete the, continue doing videos about it. Great. So hopefully this answers all the questions you have on custom calendars or on calendars in general. If you have any additional questions, let me know and I'll try to answer them for you. So this is all for today uh, if you like the video let me know by liking it or by sharing it with others that think uh, you think might want to know um, if you have comments questions suggestions about the video just let me know on the comment box or any of the social channels listed below and subscribe i publish power vi videos every single week that is monday wednesdays and fridays just about two o'clock Stockholm time in case you you want to be there when I just release the video. If you want to get notifications when I publish a new video, make sure you click the bell that is just right next to your subscribe button. Otherwise, YouTube will not notify you that I publish something new. But with all this said, I just wish you a great, great weekend and a happy Friday. Bye.